A kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Remember the vocabulary term consecutive means one right next to the other. So the sides that are consecutive, for example, ki and it, are going to be congruent. And the other set of consecutive sides, ke and et, will also be congruent. They even appear to be congruent in the picture. In a kite, you have one pair of opposite angles that's congruent, and those, once again, are the ones that look congruent. So angle K would be congruent to angle T. Clearly, angle I is not congruent to angle E. Angle E is much smaller than angle I. And just like in a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. So where the diagonals intersect will be right angles. Our first example asks us to find length of MA. And it tells us that these are all kites. So the property that's going to help us here is that in a kite, the diagonals are perpendicular. So if we're looking for MA, the length here, what we have is a right triangle where we want to find the missing side, the hypotenuse, given two legs. So we should be using C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Where C is my hypotenuse, so X squared, and A and B are my legs, 5 squared plus 6 squared. X squared equals 25 plus 36. So x squared equals 61. And the value of x will be the square root of x squared. So we get x is equal to 7.8. So ma here is equal to 7.8. The second problem is going to utilize the property that one set of opposite angles is congruent in a kite. And there these two angles here. And also we have to remember that in a quadrilateral, quadrilateral has 360 degrees inside its angles. So we need to figure out what's left after we use the 27 and the 74 degrees. So 360 minus that 27 minus that 74 gives us a total of 259 degrees. 259 degrees that must be split evenly between these two congruent angles. So we take that 259 degrees and divide it by 2. So the measure of angle A, which is the same as the measure of angle H, is 129.5 degrees. Okay, so I'd like for you to pause the video for number 3 and see if you get what I get. And the measure of angle A is congruent to H, which is 118 degrees. Okay, 4 through 9 is just review of what we've learned in the past chapter. So I'd like for you to pause the video and see if you get what I get, 4 through 9. Make sure that you read each one of these and that you truly understand why I chose the word or um, answer that I chose for each question. Okay, now there's some reading involved. We have, if the measure of angle BAD B, A, D, this angle right here is 38, and the measure of B, C, D is 50, B, C, D is 50, find A, D, C. So we want to find this angle right here. And we can tell this is a kite because the consecutive sides are congruent. Pause the video and see if you get what I get. Okay, you should have gotten 136 degrees. If you didn't, raise your hand or ask a neighbor. Okay, number 11, if BT is 5 and TC is 8, we want to find CD. So I'd like for you to pause the video and see if you get what I get for the length of CD. 
and you should have gotten 9.4. Now we're going to talk about area for trapezoids and kites. For a trapezoid, if we have base 1 and base 2, and we know what the height of the trapezoid is, we can find its area by using the formula 1 half the trapezoid's height times the sum of base 1 plus base 2. And you have to use parentheses for B1 and B2 because we're going to have to uh, add those together first before we distribute or multiply to the 1 half height. The area of a kite is the same as the area of a rhombus. Remember the area of a rhombus was 1 half the whole length of one diagonal times the whole length of the other diagonal. Okay, so let's use our formulas. Um, we'll start off with a rhombus or a kite, and we'll see if we can find the area for number one. Well, the area for a rhombus or a kite is one half diagonal one times diagonal two, and they only gave us six millimeters, so they only gave us half of a diagonal, but since it's bisected, the diagonals are bisected here, this is also six millimeters and they only gave us seven millimeters of the other diagonal so since the other diagonal is bisected this is also seven millimeters so now we're just substituting the values into our formula area equals one half diagonal one so we can call this whole thing diagonal one which has a total length of fourteen times diagonal two this whole thing here which has a total length of twelve so when we multiply it out we get 1 half of 14 times 12, which is 84. And remember, when we're denoting that we have area, we call it unit squared, or in this case, millimeter squared. Okay, so I'd like for you to pause the video and try number two on your own. See if you get what I get. Okay, and the area is 90 meters squared. And then number three, I'd like for you to pause the video and see if you get what I get. But keep in mind this time that each part of the diagonal has a different length. So this time it's six centimeters and the other part is nine centimeters. Okay, and we should have gotten 52.5 centimeters squared. If either one of those cost you problems, just raise your hand or ask a neighbor. Number four, we wanna find the area for each trapezoid. So the area formula for a trapezoid is one half the height of the trapezoid times the sum of the two bases. And we just have to make sure that we have the height and each base for each trapezoid. So number four, we take one half the height. The height is always the perpendicular measure times the sum of the two bases. So 18 plus 24. And we just have to make sure we add 18 to 24 first before we multiply everything together. So it's 1 half 13 times 18 plus 24, which is 42. And this is all plug and chug in your calculator. 0. 0.5 times 13 times 42 should give you 273 millimeters and squared because we're talking about area. All right, I'd like for you to try number five on your own. Pause the video and see if you get what I get. Okay, and I got 678.5 feet squared. Make sure you remember to use square units that tells us you're talking about the area of the trapezoid. All right, last one, number six. Um, pause the video and see if you get what I get. And we should have gotten a total area of 132 feet squared. Okay, the next examples, we're gonna be working backwards. We're gonna take the area and the area formulas to find the missing lengths. So number seven, they give us the area. We have to recognize that this is a trapezoid. The area for the trapezoid is one half the height times base one plus base two. And we have to fill in what we know and what we're looking for. The area in this case is what they gave us, 78. And that equals one half the height, which we don't know the height times base one plus base two. So 6.4 plus 13. So I'm just gonna carry out what I can. 78 equals one half times x times 6.4 plus 13, 
which is 19.4. And what I can do here is I can multiply that 1 half times 19.4. So I can take 19.4 and multiply it by 1 half, which is the same as 0.5, and I get 9.7. So 78 equals 9.7 times x. So now I take 78 and divide it by 9.7 to get 8 point, we'll just go with 8.04 for x. Okay, number 8, we're going to work backwards as well. They gave us the area for that kite and they want us to find one of the half parts of the diagonals. So we take the area of a kite formula, 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2, and we're looking for one of the diagonal lengths. They give us one of the diagonals, we'll call this diagonal 1. They give us the area, 104. So 104 equals 1 half diagonal 1, which is 16.4, and now we need to find diagonal 2. Well, if this is x, that's not our whole diagonal. The whole diagonal is x plus x, or 2x. So now we want to carry everything out. 1 half of 16.4 is saying 16.4 times 0.5, and that's 8.2. So this equals 8.2 times 2x, and we can take 2 and multiply it by 8.2. So 8.2 times 2 gives us 16.4. So 104 is 16.4 times x. So now we would divide 104 by 16.4. And we get 6.3 for x, which would make this also 6.3. Okay, now that you've seen an example of each, I'd like for you to pause the video and try number 9. Okay, and for number 9, we should have gotten x is 6.6. .6. If you did not get that, raise your hand or ask a neighbor. Alright, last one, number 10. This is a trapezoid, so we want to make sure we know our trapezoid formula. Pause the video and see if you get what I get for the value of one of our bases, x. And after rounding to the nearest tenths, I got x is 16.2. If you didn't get that, raise your hand or ask a neighbor.